Okay, so today everyone we're going to do a normal distribution problem. And so we have Alex who has the following test scores in chemistry and math. And we want to determine which one she performed better on. Well, from this scenario, we know the class mean for chemistry was 50. And her, uh, Alex's score was 55. Class mean was 90. Math, her score was 95. So they both differ by five points. But if you want to compare them, you need to be able to compare similar things. And I'm to do so, I'm going to take them, I'm going to put them onto the z-axis. I'm going to convert them both to z-scores. And so my z-score for the chemistry, using the formula from the front book, is I take my value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So it's going to be my test score was 55 minus 50, or Alex's test score, over 1.2. And so if we figure that out, oh, if I clear that, it's going to be 55 divided by 1.2. And you can clearly see that the z-score is 4.17. That is means, if here's the mean, and here are my standard deviations, Alex's score is way over here. I know that between three standard deviations both ways, three and three, there's 99.7% of the population. So Alex crushed this test. This was such a exceptionally high score relative to everyone else. If I switch over to the math and do a Z score for this, my Z score for math will be 95 minus 90 over 10. Well, that's 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5. This is Alex's math score. Here's 1 to negative 1, and here is 68% of the population. So this is not an incredibly high score. It's really close to average. And so she seriously outperformed herself and everyone else in the chemistry test relative to the math. And so that's how we use z-scores. They refer to standard, their measurement is standard deviations, and it standardizes values so that we can compare them. Okay, so let's try B part now. On the chemistry test, if a student is chosen at random, what is the probability that the student scored 49 or less? Well, here's my normal curve. I know the mean is 50, and this student scored 49. And so I'm looking for this area here. And so I'm going to introduce my random variable z tilde is a normal with a mean of 50 and the variance 1.2 squared is that I am looking for the probability that c is less than 49. So I can do this two ways. I can go to calculate the z score which will be 49 minus 50 over 1.2, which is negative 1 over 1.2, which is, I think, negative 0 0.833. I can do that. Let's just double check that. Okay. I can now use, to find the area, I can use my calculator. If I go second, distributions, and now I'm going to do normal CDF. And I'm going to go from my lower limit is negative infinity all the way up to negative, negative 0.8333333. Because I've done a z-score, I've put it onto the z-axis, which is kind of down here, which is saying this mean is 0, and this value is negative 0.8333, and so on. So I'll keep my mean and standard deviation as is. And so I get a probability. So the probability that C is less than 49 is simply, or better notation in this case now. Oh, if I go C, C is less than 49 is the same as saying that Z is less than negative 0.833, which is 0 0.20. 
two to three significant figures. So that's converting to z-scores. But what I can also do is I can just, my calculator will do the conversion for me. I could also go back to distributions to my normal CDF. My lower is still negative infinity, but now I'm going to use the actual chemistry scores, 49. The mean is 50. And the standard deviation is 1.2. And so the calculator will calculate the z-scores and do all the probability all behind the screen scenes. And I can see that my value is this. Drawing the picture, introducing the random variable are important steps along the way. Let's try C part. So now in the math test, if a student is changed at, chosen at random, what's the probability the student scored more than 96? Well, see if you, pause the video, see if you can do this one on your own. So I'm going to introduce my notation. My math and my random variable is normal from 90 is the mean and 10 squared is a variance. And the way I write this is always the mean and the variance. And so I want to find the probability that the mean is bigger than 96. So if I draw a quick sketch here, which is a very good habit to get into, here's 96. I'm looking for this area here. <clears throat> and so I could go straight to my calculator and I can calculate well, if I do my z-score, is 96 minus 90 over 10 is going to be 6 over 10, which is 0.6. So m is bigger than 96 is the same as the probability that z is bigger than 0 0.6, which is, if I just put in my calculator, I can go to my distributions, my normal CDF. Now I'm going to go from 96 to big number, infinity. The mean is 90. Standard deviation is 10. And now I get a probability of 0 0.274 to three significant figures. So doing this Z calculation is not necessary all the time, but there are problems that exist that if you're going to have to do the Z score and you have to understand what it means. On the math test, if a student should, what's, what's the probability to score between 89 or less than 89? So here's my math. So here's my lovely normal curve. So I want less than 89. So here's this area and more than 98. Here's 98. I need this area. Well, I want to write this out and I still have math as defined so I can use M. I want uh, m is less than 89, union, m is greater than 98. Well, I can also say that's the same as 1 minus all this inside probability. So the probability that 89 is less than m, less than 98. My calculator will do this calculation fairly easy. And if I go to my distributions, normal CDF, my lower range is 89, my upper is 98, the mean and standard deviations are as such. And so then I can get 1, 1 minus 0 0.3279. I subtract it from 1, and I'll get 0 0.672 is the probability that it is in the blue area.